What's up everybody, Cameron Odyssey 7 Owners. Today's a special day. Jose is on his way down to my house and we are installing the Merc Racing MRA 1900 upgraded supercharger. So I'm getting my car prepped and we're gonna show you how to put this thing on the car. There are a few things we need to transfer from your OEM 1320 setup over to the Merc Racing MRA 1900. Starting at the back moving forward, we're gonna be using your OEM bypass valve and we don't need the noodle here, we just have the bypass valve and to remove that, it's really simple. You're gonna take the four T30s off holding the actual noodle on, remove that and then there's three vertical T30s you're gonna remove and then this will just come out. Moving forward, we're gonna to need to remove this EVAP solenoid and the trick to getting that out is knowing how to manipulate this little clamp here and I'll show you what I do to get that out. And it's connected to the metal bracket here that just slides off. We're gonna to have to modify that and we'll show you what we do there after we get it off. We need to get these two solenoids off. The gray solenoid is held on, held on by uh, two T25 bolts and that will just come off. This one is on a metal bracket that we're gonna have to kind of bend down to slide off and we'll show you what we do there. And then lastly, you have a map sensor here. This measures the temperature of the air post throttle body, but before compression. And we need to transfer that over to the MRI 1900. So I'm gonna remove all the easy things and I'm gonna show you how to get the more difficult things off. To remove your EVAP solenoid, first thing you wanna do is just slide this up off of that metal bracket so that you have some wiggle room here. And then this clamp, mine's kind of broken on the side, but still there's two prongs that go underneath the lip on this metal piece from the supercharger. And so what I do is I get some kind of thin screwdriver and I pop one side out and I hold that up to where it doesn't go back underneath. And then I go to the other side and pop that out and it just comes right off. To get this solenoid off, we need to slide it off the bracket, but there's a couple things on our way. We got this U-shaped piece of plastic that secures a line. We're just gonna pop that tab up a little bit. There's a little dimple there and that slides off. And now you can see these two pieces of metal. It's stopping this from sliding directly off. So we're gonna use a pair of pliers, channel lock, something that we can get on there and hopefully compress them. Oh yeah, they come down really easy. And once you have those in, this should work itself off. And it looks like there might be a little bit of a tab there. So we're going to open that up. And we're gonna slide and work this off. My camera's in the way, so I'm gonna just move it out. Actually, there it goes. Right there, that comes off. And now we can relocate these to the MRA 1900. So in order to relocate this to the MRA 1900, we need to remove the actual OEM line. And since we're, none of us are planning on putting the OEM stuff back on, we're just gonna go ahead and cut it. Uh, they're cheap enough to replace if you ever do decide to reverse things. So we're gonna put a relief cut here in the front over these barbs, cause it's on there tight. Okay, so the easiest way to get this line off is you can obviously see that I cut it short. And what I did was I took a razor blade and I cut a line down the center. And after that, I just took a pair of pliers and kind of worked it apart because this is a pretty stiff line. So I put it in here, pried it apart a little bit, and then it pulls right off. So one of the required things that we have to do since the MRA 1900 runs three bar upgraded map sensors and not your OEM ones is we have to repin the actual wiring harness for your map sensors. And that sounds daunting, but it's not too bad. So I'm gonna show you how to do it. The first thing we need to do is remove this housing off of the actual harness. And there's two very small clips on each side of it that you need to pretty much undo. There's one here and there's one here. So if you can zoom in there and make sure you can see this, what I'm gonna do is just gently pry this up and you can kind of see that split start to happen. Once you see that, go ahead and go to the other side and do the same thing. Just get this tiny screwdriver under here and start to split it open. And once you do, you have to go back one more time. It likes to move around. And then it opens up and we can peel it or pull it off of the actual wiring harness itself and it comes completely off we can set that side somewhere safe. Now you have the exposed wiring harness and what you wanna do before you do anything is get your phone out and take a picture of the back here because there are some numbers that are gonna tell you what is one, two, three, and four. And I can tell you with the gray tab up on my wiring harness, but confirm on yours, with the gray tab up, it's one, two, three, four from left to right. And we're gonna reorder these wires so that four is one, and basically we run it backwards. So instead of it being one, two, three, four, we're gonna go four, three, two, one with these wires. So make sure you take a picture and you can see all your wires so you know which one goes which. So in order to depin these, we flip it over and this purple tab is a retaining pin. So once again, take the screwdriver, gently get under here and you can pull it all the way off, 
but you don't really need to. You just need to offset it a little bit. And then once you have that done, take a small deep pinning tool. And from the top here, you're gonna depress a retaining pin. You should hear a little click. I don't know if anybody's gonna hear that. I can feel it though as I do it. And then after those are all pressed out, we're gonna take the deep pinning tool and you just push them backwards and you'll be able to see on the back, the weather seal gets pushed back. If it doesn't push back very easily, don't force it. Just make sure you've got the retaining pin pushed down and then try it again. Okay, so I removed the purple clip completely just so that you guys could see a little bit better, but we've got all of them pushed back out. And like I said, from here, you just gently pull back on the wires. And then once again, you can see these retaining pins. And before you start rewiring them to put them in here, we need to lift those catches up again. So let me set this down. So once again, take your retaining pin and very gently, you wanna go in here and lift this little retaining pin up so that it can catch in there once we reinstall it. All right, so here's a close up of what we're doing to before we put these back in. You wanna take your retaining tool and just go right here on the side and just gently catch on here and don't be too forceful. Just lift that one piece up a little bit and that's what's gonna catch in there. And do that to all three or all four of these before you attempt to put it back into the harness. All right, I wanna talk about the importance of making sure you took that picture before you get to this point because what we discovered on my engine is that the bank one colors were different than the bank two colors on the other side because we already did that side. So don't go based off color position alone. Make sure you're looking at the numbers on the back and doing the reverse. So once again, whatever was one, two, three, four, we're gonna now line it up four, three, two, one. So Jose's over by a diagram we drew up. So Jose, what's the first one we're putting in? Uh, yellow green. Yellow green. So that's this one here, the yellow green wire. We wanna make sure that the flared out tab that we have is up and you wanna put it in this way where you have the windows and go in here and you should hear a click once you get it all the way in, like that. What's the next one, Jose? Number three, green. just solid green. Click, what's the next one for me, Jose? Yellow gray. The yellow gray one. Sorry, trying to get my hands in here. Click. And the last one is gonna be black by process of elimination. And click. Now I need to grab the purple retaining clip and make sure that I put that on. It's just an extra safety measure to make sure these things do not back out. And then after that, we're gonna be reinstalling the, I guess we call this like sheath guard type of a thing here. And that is going to go on this side here because of the gray locking tab. So when this gets plugged into the MRA 1900, it's going to sit like this. So you need to make sure everything's aligned correctly for that. So um, we're gonna get this in here, get this aligned and it's gonna sit kind of like that. These things are super fun to deal with. And there we go. So that's gonna sit into the MRA 1900 like this once it's installed in this general area. But that's how you repin these. Once again, take pictures before you depin anything on both banks to make sure that you get them reversed in the correct order. Let's talk about what you need to do to prepare your OEM PCV system to be able to run the MRA 1900 and connect to it. So with the MRA 1900, there's no bottom located PCV return line. So here's the OEM PCV and you can see this is where the OEM return line is. We've got a plug in there and I'll talk about that in a bit, but that's where this piece would connect into. That's what sits like this and connects to the bottom of your supercharger. So we have to relocate that and get this to run a different line. So the first thing you're gonna do is remove your OEM little chimney stack thing, that right there. And then you're gonna put one of the Merc Racing supercharger plugs in right here. And that looks like this, okay? So uh, these we developed for the PCV relocation kit and they happen to work perfectly right there. It'll come with a gasket, the plug, and the screw that'll aid in putting it in and removing it. It'll also come with a little tiny dowel pen to secure it into the actual PCV. So. Pull your chimney stack out, put that in, put the dowel in, remove the bolt, don't leave that in there obviously, put that somewhere safe and you're done with that. Now, we need to move over to the breather hose side of things here. Let me get it to where we can see. So here's your OEM breather hose, comes out of the PCV. 
Now you've got this little screw here and you need to remove this screw and pull your breather hose out a little bit because on this channel here, this is, I, I don't know how to describe this, this little clip here that holds in a plug. And I don't have that plug, but there should be a picture coming up right now of that plug. So check that out. All right, now you guys have seen a picture of it, you kind of know what to look for, but there's a black plug that's located right here. This is also another thing that can be used to return PCV oil vapors. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna remove that plug out of the OEM system, and we're going to install this adapter in its place. This is why you need to keep your OEM gaskets in good shape when you remove it. Don't let them get damaged because you're gonna need to put those one in each of these channels here, right? Once you get those in there, lubricate them very lightly with a little bit of oil, and then you're going to plug this into the PCV to replace that OEM plug. Now you can see on this adapter, it's got an angle that goes upwards. Make sure you get that angled up and not down or else you're gonna have a little bit of an issue. But once you get that in there, you're going to be taking a piece of hose that should be provided with the Merc Racing Kit and you're going to slide that over the end of the angled adapter. You will have um, a band fitting or something there to make sure that stays connected. And then this is going to connect to a port on the actual MRA 1900. The last step in preparation for installing the MRA 1900 is that we have to remove the OEM uh, supercharger studs and that's because we're going to be using bolts to secure it to the engine. Now before you do any of this, one thing to be cognizant of as you're messing with this, running your supercharger up and down over these, you hit the studs and you will get little metal shavings that come off of the aluminum. So make sure you have paper towels into your intake inlets to be able to stop any of that stuff from going in there and be prepared to vacuum these out before you put anything on. But to get these removed, get a good pair of vice grips and get them set appropriately. And then you can just rock back and forth to loosen them up. And mine were already pretty easy to do that with. And once you get them loose, you can get these up at an angle and connect on there and then just spin them around until they get so loose that you can just take them off by hand. All right. So this first one out, I'm gonna go ahead and remove the rest of them, clean this up, get everything vacuumed, and then it's time to install the supercharger. All right, Jose, so when people order this and it gets shipped to them, it's gonna come fully assembled, every bolt in here ready, basically ready to run, mm -hmm. but it has to be disassembled in order to actually install it on the car, correct? Correct, correct. All right, so will you tell me what exactly we have to remove from the supercharger to install it on the car? All right, yeah, once you remove the blower out of the uh, box, you're gonna find the unit fully assembled. All these bolts are gonna be in place, put together, uh, including the center rib section that holds the blower in place. We ship it this way, not only for, you know, packaging and so on, but for strength. It will keep the unit nice and strong when it's being packaged and thrown around by the, Makes you know, the, the drivers. Uh, the throttle body does not come with the kit or nor is installed with a kit. Just want to point that out since it's showing right So it's either right use your OEM one and have restricted airflow or go ahead and buy an upgraded throttle body That's to correct. make sure you're taking advantage of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, All it right. ships so with the uh, upgraded throttle body uh, uh, as a default. Okay. We do not ship it with the OE uh, throttle body. Okay. Um, anyway, so yeah, in here you're going to find that there is a section, a center section of bolts that we recommend you take out first. Uh, these are 50 millimeters, these are 45, 40, and 35 millimeter bolts. I would recommend you grab some Ziploc bag and label them up or, you know, however you like to organize and keep everything organized because those lengths matter. If they're too long, you put them in the wrong place, you're going to penetrate through the blower. Okay. You don't want that. So you're going to be shipping this with a set of directions as well. And that directions is going to have a bolt diagram for the top, That's of it, right? That's correct, yeah. So they can reference the bolt diagram mm -hmm. as well to help keep them organized. That's right. That's okay. right. Uh, the outer perimeter are 20 millimeter, 20 millimeter bolts, and then the front ones are 12 millimeter meter board okay. bolts uh and that will be again as you mentioned shown in the diagram okay. i'm going to take this off for you so you can see the last two bolts here and what happens uh well show you what looks what it looks like inside yeah. um once you remove hey, the tyler you want to come grab this top hat all right <laughs> we've got our own internet celebrity here tyler <laughs> hayes hanging out with us helping us with the install today he could put it. this somewhere safe all right, you cannot take it with you, okay? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so thank you, Tyler. So uh, you're gonna see the cores are installed. We've already removed the bolts out of this core for ease of uh, assembly here. Okay. And these, all of these are already preassembled. Just take your tool of choice, remove them carefully. And once again, put these bolts aside, packaged and labeled so you don't mix those up with anything else too? That is correct, that is correct. So we'll remove them. 
two more bolts, two, three more bolts to go, and we're gonna show you how to remove the core. Very, very simple. There are no gaskets for the core because the way it's assembled, the CNC and everything just closes everything down really nice. So gone are the days of rubber seals in that mess. Excellent. Uh, in the front, uh, there are three bolts that pull the core forward to make the seal happen for the water lines inside. And I'll show you what it looks like in a second here. Uh, the foot pounds reference for all these bolts will be provided in the diagrams. Uh, so that you have a reference, re you have reference information for them. Okay. So removing the cores, uh, this will be a little challenging because I don't have a way to just hold it up. But if you lift it up, there's you know use the holes that are under the the, the manifold. Yep. And just one finger or two, just push it up. And then grab it by and, the edge. And yep, and the core just comes right out as so. All like right. So. Then we set that somewhere safe as well. Mm -hmm. On the subject of the intercooler cores, I want to point something out to you guys. If you ever have to remove your intercooler cores to check something or to remove the supercharger, keep in mind that they're full of water and it's not like the OEM one where the supercharger intercooler cores come out with the supercharger because you have to remove those to get the bolts out, right? So you need to make sure you drain as much water out of those as possible so you don't risk pouring any into your engine when you remove it. So what I do for that is I basically pop off the intercooler hoses, let the water drain out on the outside, and I use my air gun with real light air, I blew into the uh, water line that goes into the intercooler core and I let that blow all the rest of the water out through the bottom and then when it comes to removing the intercooler cores on this current revision it's a little bit difficult because there's no specific spot to grab them and lift them up because they have to come straight up you can't lift one edge up and then grab and pull it out because it's such a tight fitment so what I do is I basically got a tiny you know right angle pick on each side of the intercooler core real gently got it underneath that and pulled them up and then I could grab it and get it out of there just make sure you get as much water out as possible so you don't risk getting any into your engine. If some does fall into your engine, make sure you have a fluid extractor to be able to pull it out and you'll be fine. And then we look in here, explain to me what's going on just so we have a heads up. So this is where we're gonna be attaching to the engine, right? We're gonna have That's bolts correct. that go through and this is gonna go where the supercharger studs are that we're gonna remove. That's correct. Excellent. Yeah. And as simple as that, the, the, the map sensors may or may not come pre-installed. I might just okay. put them in the back for you, but that's a couple of bolts. Yeah, those, are, those are pretty simple. Yeah, just to keep them safe. I hate, since they're plastic, I don't want to get mishandled okay. and, and get damaged. Um, and that's it. All right. So. Next, we're going to attach the map sensor that goes between the throttle body and the supercharger, measuring the intake air temperature before compression. And you're going to use your OEM bolts that came off of the 1320. And don't cinch them down completely tight on the one side before you do the other. Kind of try and go even with them so that you don't stress out the sensor. Another thing to do to prepare for mounting the supercharger is installing all of the solenoids that were removed off the 1320 and all your vacuum solenoids, things like that for like the EVAP solenoid. And this is your clean air intake for the PCV. So we're about to put the supercharger back on the car, but before we do that, I want to point something out because we actually had this issue ourselves. These two solenoids here and these vacuum lines, uh, you can put these on in multiple different ways because obviously it's just little ports here. Do something so that you know you're connect connecting them correctly. So the way I did it online, you can do it, whatever works for you. I have a series of dots and labels. So this is the left solenoid for me because when it sits on the back of the room supercharger, it's to the left when I'm facing it. This is the right solenoid. And I just have those memorized. On the vacuum lines, I have L and L and R and R. And what I did to know which one's the top and which one's the forward ports, I did a dot system. So for this one, I have a single dot up top and on the front of it, I got a dot on each side. So as you can see, I got a single dot here and then I've got two dots on this one and the same thing for the right side. And that's my weird way that works for me. So I remember which vacuum line goes to which port on each solenoid. In terms of the electrical connectors, none of them can be messed up. They only go to one. You can't cross those at all. So uh, just make sure you get these right, because if you don't, you're going to get engine codes for your intake uh, flaps on your manifold runners. So make sure you get that right and make sure you have all your hoses and everything positioned, ready for you to install the supercharger. And we're going to go throw it on the car now. Get all of that stuff in there. If you are running an aftermarket throttle body, go ahead and get your aftermarket throttle body harness attached and then prep anything you're gonna have to plug in. So the things left to plug in are gonna be the rear map sensor, your bypass valve, and then you've got uh, two hoses, your PCV return line, which is gonna be over here. 
and we've got this line, which is the EVAP purge, uh, or I'm sorry, the EVAP solenoid that'll plug into the supercharger. So make sure everything's good and connected and tucked away and secure and routed how you need. And then it's almost time to put on the supercharger. All right, so now it's time to actually mount the supercharger to the engine. So Jose and I are both gonna do this. You can do it one-handed, but it is pretty heavy. It's heavier than the 1320. So we're gonna both do this. So if you have a friend, buy them pizza, offer them beer and get them to help you do this. But you're gonna match up the bolts inside the bottom of the supercharger with where your supercharger studs were and just set it down. Once you get the supercharger set onto the engine, do one final check before bolting it down that you have access to all the connections you need. So this is the bypass valve connection. We've got another connection back here, which is the map sensor connection. And you just wanna make sure all those are accessible and you have access to the hoses you need. So something to take note of when you're installing the supercharger uh, as we have, and it's completely installed and torqued down, ready to go. Your map sensor, our map sensor here, the wire, the wire, make sure that is not underneath the supercharger when you set it down because it doesn't look like it's gonna come out anyway. We're gonna see what we can do, but we might be taking the supercharger off to get that out. So just a heads up. But Jose's gonna show you how to install the six bolts that hold this supercharger into the engine. So you're just gonna take these provided hardware, run it make, down there. Make, yeah, make sure everything is lined up. Don't, don't put them all the way down, just finger, install them first. So once they're finger installed, Jose, are we going to tighten these just like the OEM supercharger where you go across, you know, so you're tightening it down evenly? So, you're, yeah, so that you don't want to be... tighten one side down and then the other. Mm -hmm. Correct. Uh, yeah, you, you want to at least have some sort of, have the OEM pattern. Yeah. Yeah, just to, again. Uh, you just don't want to overstress one side or the other mm -hmm. as you torque it down. Preferably, I, do they start in the center on the OEM? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, so he's if, if getting this finger tight. One, one quick note, if these don't line up for some reason, that means that somehow um, either you or somehow the disassembly didn't go right. The assembly didn't go right and the tanks are a little shifted. Okay. So you may have to loosen the tanks a little bit. Okay. And then uh, line up the bolts. Okay. But that should be, they should be preset from us for you to be able to install it without yeah. a problem. All right. All right, so we'll go ahead and torque these down, and then we're also gonna go ahead and get the map sensor connected so that we can get the top hat installed and get everything else connected. When it's time to torque these bolts down, they get torqued down to the OEM spec of 20 Newton meters. All right, once you get this torque down, you can go ahead and connect everything that needs to be connected. So I just connected the throttle body wiring harness and moved it out of the way for the intake. I'm gonna move around to the other side here and we're going to go ahead and connect the map sensor. I just gotta get the actual plug. There it is. We're gonna go ahead and connect that on there. And then, I'm gonna have to probably trim this. <laughs> I need to trim this, but this is a hose that I use for my custom PCV relocation. So this would connect right here for your EVAP solenoid. And so obviously I need to do some work there. Then we have the OEM, or not OEM, this is from the uh, my PCV relocation. This is the return line for the PCV. And that's gonna go over the barb. And now it's time to get the top of the supercharger installed. All right, so now it's time to install the intercooler cores. We've already gotten one in. We've got a rag here to protect the blade so nothing falls down in there because we're going to be dealing with a lot of uh, different bolts. Uh, so Jose, show me how we're going to put this in here. What do people need to know? Yep, pretty much uh, make sure that the core, you know, the O-rings and the holes for the water ports are in the front, not the back. Uh, so that, you know, it, it goes in the right way. The core pretty much just drops up, drops in like this. And that's right. it, nothing fancy about it. So what that. are the first bolts we put in? Do we put the top bolts in first or the front bolts in we first? We are going to put the front bolts in first. And those and are 22 millimeter bolts, correct? 22 millimeter bolts, uh, it will be in the document as well. And uh, make sure they're a five foot pound. You're uh, a five foot pound of torque. Mm -hmm. And you want to tighten them from the center one first and then the outer ones, correct? That so is they, correct. They tighten evenly. That's correct. And I recommend, you You know, a lot of people would like to use their tools right away. Just. Finger position them first, mm -hmm. and then 
tighten after that with your tools. Okay. So let's go ahead and get those torqued and we'll work on the top ones. All right, so we've got our 12 millimeter bolts here and there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 of them that secure the top portion of the intercooler core down. I'm gonna use my Milwaukee tool here just to kind of zip these down. I'm not gonna put any pressure on it. I'm just eliminating time so that we can just torque them in. And we're gonna start with these four center ones. We go left, right, top left, top right. And then after that, we're gonna move to the outer ones. What are you doing back there, Tyler? Oh, he's setting up our uh, torque wrench. Yeah, uh, that's right. Yeah, have it ready to go. And what's the foot poundage on it? Well, for... Yeah, top ones are, are going to be uh, seven uh, foot pounds, and the front ones are five. Okay. I yeah. just There's a that, little bit of resistance, so I didn't want to force it with the drill. Yeah, and if you get a resistance, uh, just make sure that... that well, it's the lineup of the uh, core itself. Sometimes the, the lip, the sealing, sealing lip uh, gets in the way a little bit. You just gotta kind of yeah. get through that. Yeah, it wasn't cross threaded or anything like that. So a lot of, these are really tight parameters on these to seal the air. And then go back down here. We've already kind of gotten that one a little tight. So we'll get that there. All right, so we got those snug, so now it's time to torque them down. Uh, as Jose said, we're doing seven foot-pounds on top. And once again, we're gonna start on the inner ones. Just go nice and slow with a good torque wrench. And from there, like I said, the pattern, we're gonna start with these middle four. We're gonna go left, right, left, right, then come down and do left, right, left, right, down, and up with the centers. So I'm gonna go and torque those down. All right, so now that we have the supercharger intercooler cores fully secured, it's time to get the actual cover of the supercharger on. But first we need to set our bypass valve into place. We're using the OEM one from the 1320. So just kind of set it in place here. You might have to move some of these vacuum lines around to get it to sit correctly. And just get it generally in, in place here because the top hat is what's gonna actually hold it together while we completely tank it down here. So. I can already tell I'm gonna to have to maneuver just a little bit, but I'm gonna get the top secured and I'm gonna rotate this around just a little bit. And then we're gonna use the provided hardware from Merck Racing here. And we're just gonna thread these by hand. We don't wanna put any downward pressure on these because there's a seal, a gasket underneath this that we wanna make sure we torque down evenly. And uh, if we put too much pressure back here, we might ruin that. Now, the other thing, the last little part here with the bypass valve, is to plug it in. Don't forget to do that. Get that nice click. So I'm gonna just hand tighten these a little bit and then we'll start working on the top hat. All right, so Jose, right now you're just setting up the bolts, right? That's right, setting up the bolts for the top cover plate. Uh, there is uh, 12 millimeter bolts that go in the back center section down here, four uh, 12 millimeters in, this, in the front here. And then the rest are gonna be 20 millimeters. So what you're saying is definitely consult the instruction manual with the diagram when you're doing this. That's make correct. Sure, That's make correct. sure you're doing it exactly as you have instructed them. And this is also why we don't put any pressure on the bypass valve bolts because we want this to be perfectly flat while we start in the center, mm -hmm. working our way out, and then that'll be the last that we torque down. That's right. right. You wanna spread that evenly. You don't torque everything hard, you yep. know, just, just start compressing, maybe do two or three passes. Mm -hmm. uh, and the last know. one is seven foot pounds for the, the top? Is, yeah. Okay. Yeah. We're going to go ahead and get working on that. And come back over there. All right, so we got all the bolts into the supercharger top hat, just threaded by hand. We're going to torque them down. I'm not going to show you us torquing every single one of these down. You need to consult your instruction manual, which has a diagram that will show you the bolt locations for each different lengths of bolts, as well as the torque values. So make sure you consult those before you go torquing this down, as well as the torque pattern. There's just a couple things we got to button up before we're able to start this thing up. First off, we're going to talk about this hose and line here. This one typically sits in front of this and it kind of gets in the way of the coolant lines for the supercharger. So we pushed it back and zip tied it off just so it sits there out of the way. After that, we need to install our map sensors. So the driver's side one, bank one, that's just going to connect in just like an OEM connection. Push it forward, lock the gray tab. But on this side, since it's in the front and not on the side of the supercharger, we have to have a harness extension, which Jose's got in his hand. So he's going to install it and show you how we're gonna route it. I'm gonna move to the other side. So show us how it's done, Jose. 
Plug it in. Plug it in. Simple as that. There's going to be a coolant houses that go through here. Uh, I would say don't plug this in yet. Okay. Just leave it to the side. And next step is going to be getting the hoses. Getting done. the coolant hoses on. Mm -hmm. and then we're going to show how we route that and secure it. Yeah. All right. So let's get the coolant hoses and we'll uh, go ahead and just, we're just going to put the coolant hoses on, but we're going to show you one special thing about the setup here. So let's go ahead and grab one of those. All right. So Jose's got one of the first coolant hoses. Keep in mind that they go behind the supercharger belt. One well, something we kind of <laughs> forgot when we decided to put the belt on early, but you can still route it right behind it. Go ahead and... and I'm gonna add a quick note. So this hoses I trimmed, we, we make them a little longer than usual, okay. just to make sure the hoses are not too short when people get them. Mm -hmm. So put the lines on, uh, make sure that when you put it in, it is not too long and it touches the belt or it's too far out. Yep. So trim them as needed. And this is a good reference for where we did set up uh, landed at. Okay. Uh, this uh, map sensor, we want to leave it in the outside of the hose, uh, okay. so, like so. Put it here. Uh, we don't have the hose clamps in here now, but you know the hose clamps obviously go yeah. here, and that will. Yeah, we're gonna clamp it down once mm -hmm. we show you guys how we run this. All right, and then this line obviously is gonna go here. Uh, the Do you want to get the other coolant hose on first, just so we can uh, show them exactly how we're Go ahead. Yeah. Yep. So here's the second coolant hose. This one does not need trimming, but you may trim if you still want to get a more tighter uh, feel for it. But as you can see, they fit very, very nicely. And you guys, one thing here, I have a divorced and custom coolant line setup, So that's why you see these hoses coming off to the right. If you have an OEM setup, he's going to have connections that actually connect to the OEM lines for the ones that go straight down the front of the engine. So mm -hmm. he'll have connections for you. These are some custom ones we made to fit with my current setup. So just something to point out. All right. And you see how so, this will connect here? Mm -hmm. Just Because this goes there. from one inch to three quarter for my car. Yeah. So now that those are connected without the clamps, how are we going to mount this and secure it? All right. So to keep things, you know, tidy and, and looking great and not pinch, not, don't pinch any, uh, pinch any wires, uh, we're going to route it this way around the hose here. Uh, the provided harness just connects us like so. Just like, like the OEM connection? Yep. Yeah, like your tab. And then I think we decided we're going to just attach it to attach it right here to the, I think that's an AC, AC line. line. Yep. Yeah, we're going to zip tie it off there. So it's just out of the way. There's not much tension on it and mm -hmm. it's good and secure. And it keeps it accessible for you. Absolutely. So, all right. Cool. Uh, One thing to take note of this line here, especially with the supercharger uh, drive belt, it gets really close to it. So what I did is I zip tied it off very lightly to this line here. Don't go super tight because you don't want to break the barb here, but I did that for peace of mind so that I had plenty of clearance behind that line to the super driver or the supercharger drive belt. All right, guys, in regards to installing the MRA 1900, that's it. From this point forward, it's just like reattaching all your accessories from your OEM supercharger. Put a supercharger belt on, same way as you know normal. Uh, make sure you get your intake installed. Then upload whatever file you're gonna be using for your MRA 1900 if you have a specific file designed for it. If not, you can run it on a dual pulley file from pretty much any of the main tuners. But if you are installing a throttle body for the first time along with this, an upgraded one, you need to make sure you do a throttle body adaptation or else your car won't be happy. So get all that done, go out, do a couple data logs and make sure everything's running kosher and enjoy your Merc Racing MRA 1900. Hope you guys found this DIY really helpful. Please follow the channel if you like the content, like the video, that really helps me. It really helps Jose to get this information out for people. And we'll see you guys on the next Audi C7 Owners video.